Romans. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever like gone through Romans like this uh, that we're doing today. I've taken a verse here and there, obviously, th throughout, throughout the years. Uh, but, but the book of Romans is, is, is uh, called the Gospel According to Paul. Uh, a lot of people call it that because he, he really, uh, although he's not a gospel writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's, those are the gospels, uh, he, he comes later, um, becomes a Christian later. Uh, he, he hits a lot of the main themes of the gospel, the gospel, the good news uh, of Jesus Christ and the whole idea of, of salvation in his letter to Rome here. Um, uh, I mean, and, and pretty early on, he, he, he in his writing to Rome, uh, to the Roman church, uh, really tells us how important, how critical the gospel is, how really super important it is. The first thing we have to understand uh, that what Paul is going to tell us is that none of us are perfect. Now, now, now I know we, we say that, but when they, when we almost get offended if someone like say we're a sinner, right? But, but his, this is what he says, we're, we're a sinner. I am, I am, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, right? Um, and that may sound a little harsh. Um, a lot of people don't like to hear that. Uh, and maybe it's because sometimes we might say it uh, with a little more gusto than we should. <laughs> you know, you're a sinner. Uh, hopefully we don't point at anybody, call them all sinners. But the reality is I, I'm a sinner, right? I, I, I've, I've sinned. Um, so, sometimes churches even back off of talking about sin because people don't like to hear It's like, oh, I, like, oh man, I just don't want to, that's kind of a downer. But, but it's important to get the base and understand that that's who I am. That's what I've done. I, I'm a sinner. He says in chapter 3, verse 10, there is no one righteous, not even one. It's not a personal attack. He, he's, he's not trying to be mean. He's not yelling at anybody. He's not throwing rocks at anybody. He's just saying, hey, just so you understand, there, there's this expectations of God. There is this, this great law of God, the whole Old Testament that you read through and you read all his expectations for us. None of us have made it. N none of us have ever really reached the standards of what God wants us for a, for a perfect life. Jesus did, but nobody else ever, ever has. There is no one righteous, not even one. And, and, and by righteousness, <clears throat> Paul's talking about a right relationship with God uh, b because you have uh, been, you know, pure <laughs> your whole life. You never said anything you shouldn't have, thought anything you shouldn't have, done anything you shouldn't have, looked at anything, you know, any, any of that stuff. But he says we're all, we're all messed up. <laughs> we're, we've, we've all become guilty at some point of, of, of sin. And, and so the first really part of understanding the gospel is for me to get over my self-righteousness thing, you know, that oh, don't call me a sinner. It's like, go ahead and call me a sinner. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's what I am. I, I'm, I'm guilty, all right? Uh, if I don't acknowledge I have sinned, I can't do anything about it because I don't think I need to. And, and so that's really where Paul starts out. And he repeats the same idea a few verses later. Uh, he started out in 3.10, now in 3.23. He says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That doesn't leave any of us out. I, I, we've all sinned. We, you know, we've just, we've sinned. <laughs> I, I, I've I've rebelled in some way uh, against, against God, which puts us all on the same uh, playing field. We're on a level playing field, right? We, we're all in the same place. Describes all of us. I've sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. You've sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. This would be a great time to turn to the person next to you and say, hey, you know you're a sinner, right? Um, because we're all there, right? And, and I gave you permission, so it's not even you being mean, it's just you being honest. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're, all, we're all sinners. Now, in order to understand and appreciate the gospel, I have to acknowledge that. I have to understand where I am as a person, and I have failed to uh, live up to God's per perfect uh, uh, standards. Kinda like, it's kinda, it's, it's the, like the parable Jesus mentions in, in Luke 18. Uh, he tells a story about a Pharisee and a tax collector. Uh, Pharisees, everybody, you know, is just the self-righteous guy. He's a religious guy. He knows all the books of the Bible. He knows all, you know, everything's memorized. And then there's the tax collector who who everybody looks down at, you know, he's made all the mistakes, he's done all the, everything wrong, he's he totally living a complete opposite lifestyle of God. Those two guys are praying, and the Pharisee is praying, he's like, oh God, thank you that I'm not like anybody else, you know, I, I, I don't have all the sins the other people have, I'm not greedy, I'm not unrighteous, I'm not an adulterer, I don't, I'm not like this tax collector over here, I mean, thank you for that I'm not like him, I fast twice a week, I give tenth of my money to, to, to God, I, I, everything, I'm a great, and, and, and this guy, thinks he has it all figured out. He thinks he has no sin in his life. He's very proud of himself. Uh, I, I'm, I'm living exactly how God wants me to live. 
Um, he's glad he's not like the bad people out there, whatever that is. But then there's the tax collector, and, and he, he, like, he won't even look up to, to, to heaven. He won't even, like, I'm not worthy to even approach God. And he's beating his chest, and he's saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I, I, I've, I've messed up. And, and, and Jesus says to, to this crowd who he's with, and he says, guess who left the prayer time uh, justified. Guess who went home justified? He said, the tax collector, the one who humbled himself, the, the one who, who didn't exalt himself and assume he was beyond sin. This is the, the famous, maybe you, you know, it sounds familiar, this is where Jesus says, whoever exalts himself would be humbled. He's talking about the Pharisee who's like, yeah, I've, I've got life, I've got it all together. He'll be humbled. God's going to humble that guy. And whoever humbles himself God uh, uh, to God, before God, excuse me, will be exalted. Uh, that the, the, the tax collector who humbled himself said, I'm a sinner, I've made mistakes. He said, I will, I will exalt him. And he went home justified. It's, it's a story. It wasn't a real thing, but Jesus used that as an illustration because he was hanging around some people who were pretty self-righteous and feeling like they had their life all together. This, this is the key uh, to everything in your relationship to God, starting out in a humble place, understanding you have made mistakes, understanding you're not perfect, you haven't done everything right, it, it, like I said, it's not a, it's not a diss against you. It's, 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 it's not uh, anybody trying to mean mean. It's not God, you know, wanting to slap you around. It's just saying, just acknowledge where you're coming from, right? Just understand where you are. Now, now, once you understand that, once you understand, okay, I have sinned. I've fallen short. Uh, for me, I mean, it was a long, long, long time ago, right? I remember, I mean, I just, it was just, you know, I've sinned. I've lied. I was a kid. I probably lied. No, I lied to my mom. I just did, you know. Um, I, I stole things. I mean, just, just stuff, right? Just stuff. Um, I sinned. I sinned. And so have you. Once we understand that, we've fallen short of God's expectations, then, then we have to understand, okay, that's a big deal. Um, uh, it, 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 there's some consequences that comes with that. It, it's, it's not like, oh, well, we all mistake mistakes. I mean, it's, it's not that. It's bigger than that. And this is where Paul tells us in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it gives us both sides of the equation there. But the first part is pretty important. The wages of sin is, is, is death. The consequences is I'm going to die because of my sin. Right? I've sinned. I'm going to die because of my sin. Now we already know that. We already know you're going to die. Right? We all understand that someday I will stop breathing. My heart will stop pumping. That's not really what this is talking about. The word here uh, in the Greek is really used for a, um, that, that's used for death here is bigger than just you're going to stop existing you know, or, or you're going to stop breathing. It's, it's, it's a bigger meaning to that. It's referring to an eternal death or an eternal separation. It's a separation is the idea here that there will be a time I am separated eternally from God. God's over here and I'm over here in a completely different place away from him. Honestly, it would be better for us if we are in sin and we're going to die in sin. It would be better for us if we just would cease to exist. But that's not what it says. Be because if we would just cease to exist, then it'll all be over, right? The pain is over, the suffering is over, uh, the, the, the challenges of life are over, disappointments are gone, it's just simply gone. But, but what Paul is telling us is, is that our body is going to cease to exist someday. I mean, you know, under that physical death. But our souls are going to continue. It, they, they won't ever stop. They, they never stop. It's, it's eternal. We'll live forever. That which means if I have died in sin, the pain never leaves. The suffering never leaves. The disappointment will not be gone. It's with me for eternity. It, it'll never go away, ever. It's, it's awful. It's awful to, to, to really consider this. In, in Genesis, God breathed the life in, into Adam. He was just this... This, this you know, pile of dust formed into a man and he breathes life into him, creating him as an eternal soul that would, would never die. And the fact that I've sinned means that I will live forever with the penalty for that sin that I will pay forever. And that's even hard, we can't even comprehend that. I don't, I don't get that because I don't know what forever is. Uh, I've never been there, but I'm in it right now. I've started, it started for me. We'll be separated eternally from God, separated from everything that is good, Separating for, for anything that is love, when we can think of God, anything that is pure and holy is separated from us. It's all absence when God is not present. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the, the, the separation is, is our, our wages for sin. It, 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 wages, I mean, I've, I've earned it, right? Again, it's not God just being mean, it's not him being angry and throwing people down and saying, I'm God, you're not. It's, it's just, I've, I've earned, I've earned this separation. 
You, you get a job, you, may, you might sign a contract or make some type of agreement with an employer. I'm going to work so many hours a week, or I'm going to accomplish so many tasks, whatever it is your, your agreement is. They agree to pay you a certain figure in return. So when you get paid, you're not like shocked. You know, you knew, oh, what? I agreed to this. I, I worked it. You paid me. I've, I've earned these, these wages here. Paul is warning us that when we meet God face to face, and we will, every one of us, and if there's sin in our lives that we haven't taken care of that issue, and we're cast away from God because of that sin, that, that it isn't God being mean, it's not him being hateful, it, it's not him being spiteful toward us or terrible, it's him giving us exactly what we've earned. I, I, I did this, and this is what I get as a result. I've earned this penalty. Maybe you've heard people say, oh my God, but never send anyone to hell. I mean, I've seen people write that online. I've seen people, say, people have said that to me. And my response would be, well, neither would mine. But he will let you go if you earn it. If that's what, I mean, you, you understand that's where you're at. I'm a sinner, and there's a consequence to my sin. And that is, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to die. And in the sin economy, so to speak, uh, it only takes one sinful moment to earn this penalty. One act of rebellion to earn separation from God and eternity without him. And it doesn't even matter which sin. You think, well, what's the big ones? You know, we, we have a list of big ones. Ooh, you did that one. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's, it's when I was in third grade and lied to my dad that did it. It's the same as if I was 25 and did something that would get a headline. Same thing, same, same thing, same, same punishment, same eternal punishment. Just doesn't matter. You can go through the top t ten commandments, you know, and 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 pretty quickly realize you you've broken one, right? Uh, it can, one of the commandments: don't lie. Have you ever lied? <laughs> oh, there you go. You're in with me. We're in this ship together, right? We're all in the same boat, and it's sinking. <laughs> it's, it's 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 not good. It's not it's not good. So we've all been there. We've all earned eternal life with without God, which, which means another thing Romans tells us is I need, I need someone to save me. Right? I, if I'm not getting out of this thing alive and it's going to be an eternal and it's not good and it's terrible because I earned this terribleness, uh, um, I need someone to save me. Paul addresses that way in the beginning in chapter 1. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew and also for the Greek. The gospel, the good news of Jesus, the story of Jesus is the power of God for salvation of everyone. So we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, but everyone can, I mean will, everyone can receive salvation from the penalty. It's gospels is really a pretty simple message. The gospel has the power to reverse the sentence of death that I've earned. I mean, it's, uh, there's no other way. I mean, it's, it's through the gospel. And in Romans, Paul explains where the gospel, where the power of this gospel comes from, starting with an understanding that, okay, Jesus died for me. This is a big one. <clears throat> uh, it wasn't a random death. <clears throat> it wasn't an accident. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't see that coming. I sent you my son, and you look what you did to him. This was the plan all along. Jesus died for me. Romans 5, 8. But God proves his own love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. I'm, I'm a sinner. There's a penalty for that sin. I need a Savior to take care of that penalty. And Paul tells us in Romans 5, Jesus went ahead and paid that. He took the penalty. He paid the price for you. But God proves his own love. I am lost, but God, but God changes everything. But God changes everything. I, I put a, a little ad out on, on uh, Facebook Friday night. Just I just thought, man, the world is, is full of pain and hurt. And I just want, just, I mean, I can't pay everybody's bills off. I can't, I can't go in the hospital and heal everybody, uh, you know, whatever. I, what, what can, I don't know, what can I do? Well, I can pray for people. I can pray for people. So just, just a little ad out. Hey, I just want to pray for you. Uh, who knows, who knows? Maybe it's the dumbest idea ever. Um, and like immediately, I started getting responses uh, from people. I mean, I, it's been a little over 24 hours now, and I'm getting these, these messages. Uh, pray for my drug addiction. Uh, I, I need to be the parent that, that God wants me to be, I, and for my children. Um, and, and this is getting in a way. 
It's getting away. It's hurting. It's hurting my family. I pray for my friend. They have stage four cancer. I pray for my finances. I'm trying to buy a house, and, 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 and you know, my credit's not great, and, and I, I just need prayer. It's okay. Pray. It's the best bad way. Pray. Pray. Pray for it. All right? Pray for my ministry. Some, someone's in some ministry somewhere doing something. That I just want to honor God. I want to glorify God. Absolutely. Pray, God. Let's burn this together. Let's do this. Um, one must just pray. Pray God's mercy for me. Mercy means don't get what you do deserve. I, I do deserve punishment. Pray that I don't get it. I don't know if they even understood what they were asking for, but I, I prayed for, for mercy for this, for this person. Here's the thing about God. We can be in a really bad situation, but God can fix anything. But God can intervene in any situation. I can be struggling in my marriage, but God. I can have an addiction to drugs, but, but God. I can feel really awful about myself, but God can come in. I can, I can be dead in my sin, like we all are prior to Jesus, but God. But God proves his own love for us. He's not this mean God waiting to send everyone to hell, but God saw your situation because he loves you so much that while we were still sinners, he died for us. While we were still sinners, we're still dead. We're still in our darkest time. We're still doing our darkest things. Christ died for us, Paul says. Christ said, I see that there's sin in your life, and I know what happens from that. The consequences of that are huge, eternity without me. And I know that there's a price to be paid. Let me pay that for you. He took, he shed his blood when mine should have been shedded. He took death when mine should have been, my life should have been given. But, but, but the story is so much bigger than that, even. Not only did Jesus die for us so that we don't have to, he rose from the dead in, in power, nailing himself, nailing death, excuse me, itself <laughs> to the cross and putting it in its grave. It is our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the power of this resurrection that saves us. I love Romans is, is a great book. Maybe someday I'll actually preach through the whole thing. I've never done that either. Taught through it before 100, 100 years ago. Um, but uh, that'd be a good book to, to really dig through. I'm a sinner. I'm going to die because of my sin. I need someone to save me. I, I can't crawl out of this. I, I can't be good enough to suddenly say, well, I guess that sin didn't count. It doesn't work that way. I need someone to pay that price. Jesus died to, to save me. Now, there's a ton of other verses we could look at in, in, in Romans. Like I said, <laughs> maybe we'll study it someday. Who knows? I've threatened to. Um, I may, maybe we'll do that. Uh, but it, and it could take us a lot deeper than this. But honestly, that sums it up pretty well. I mean, that, that's like the, the, a, a very uh, a simple nutshell of, of the gospel. I, I'm going to end with Romans 10 that, that really kind of wraps it all up. When, when Paul says on the contrary, what does it say? The message is near you in your mouth and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. A confession Confess with mouth, Jesus is Lord. And then we'll say this, I'll explain this, but it's, it's more than just saying it out loud. Uh, hey, Jesus is Lord. I mean, you can say that, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's bigger, bigger than just saying it verbally. And, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Wow. But for verse 10, one believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, doesn't matter who you are, okay, because this name, that same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who sins will die, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So I, I, I choose uh, where I go for eternity. It's not a mean God being judgmental and angry. It's, it's me saying, uh, yes, I'll, t I'll take that. <laughs> I'll, t I'll take that salvation. Or it's me saying, ah, no, no thanks. And, and you have that right. You have the ability to say, say no. Many people say no. 
The word confess here is a, a judicial term. It means to agree with or to acknowledge. Uh, confessing is agreeing with God that, that Jesus is more than just a good teacher, that he was more than just a religious leader starting some new thing, that he's more than just a historically moral guy or uh, one of the options out there to get to heaven. It is agreeing with God that Jesus is, is Lord. Again, key word, big word there, that he is a God above all gods, that he is the Lord above all lords, that he is the God above all world governments or political parties. He is the Lord above me and everything I want and everything I desire and everything I will, all of my dreams and hopes. He's the Lord over all of that in every way. He's the Lord above everything and everyone. Scripture tells us that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord, right? In heaven and on earth, that there'll be a day when everyone will bow down. We'll all acknowledge it because we'll see him and it'll be like, oh, and we'll fall to our knees. The key is to say that before time, before we meet him, to understand it, to, to hear the gospel of Christ and say, okay, I don't get it all, I don't understand it all, but, but okay, I'm, I'm following with you. Who, what kind of God would love you so much to die for me? That's crazy. That's an insane kind of love. I've, I've heard people uh, talk about the, the word confession in this verse or calling on the name of the Lord and, 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 and trying to imply that maybe it's just a simple prayer. Maybe it's just a simple, hey, say it out loud once and, and you're good to go. And that's not really what it's saying. We, we've we've, we've um, kind of cheapened what the real words are saying here. To confess, to call on the name, the name of the Lord uh, is more than a one-time event that you did that once, you know, eight years ago or whatever, or in your heart one day. It, it's, it's a daily confessing through your lifestyle. It, it is a, a confessing through the things you look at, a confessing through the way you act and talk and live and interact with the people around you. It all points to the fact that Jesus is Lord in your life so that someone looks at you by how you talk and how you live and how you act. Well, there's something different about you. Well, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> And, and they can tell, not because you said it, because you wore the t-shirt, but because you actually live under submission to Jesus. So it's a repentance, the thing is, is wrapped up in, in this whole thing. It's a faith in Jesus as the Son of God. It's a repentance saying, I'm going to live for you and not me. And that's a struggle. We all struggle. It's not a perfection that the next day you walk up and never sin again. It's saying, I'm living for Jesus now. That's what this is all talking about. I'd say it even involves, involves Christian baptism because Jesus said to be baptized, and that's part of obedience. What do I do if Jesus says to do something? Well, you do it. So that's all part of this, too, confession. It's the whole gospel of salvation right there in just a few sentences that Jesus did the work that he paid the price, that he paid the wages, took, took the wages of, of, of death that was owed to you, and he said, I'm gonna go ahead and take that on the cross. Now, if you want that for your life, you go ahead and take it. You go ahead and accept that. I, I, it's, it's for you, it's, it's, it's for you. Your part is to retur in return is to acknowledge him as Lord and the Son of God who rose from the dead. It, it's, it's, it's not hard. It is hard. It's not complicated. Because it's a lifelong decision of walking in Jesus. That's the gospel according to Paul. He, he would know, he would know, he, he lived it, right? He met Jesus after the resurrection. Not before, but after the resurrection is when he met Jesus. He was personally trained by Jesus. He led thousands of people to faith in Jesus by telling them the same things that we just read in, in Romans. I mean, these are the things he said before. It wasn't like it came to him one night and he wrote it down real quick. This is the stuff he taught as he traveled around. This is what he wanted people to know and how they could be saved. But they understood, had to understand they needed to be saved in, in the first place. So if, if you're a Christian, you're probably listening to this, listening to this just, and it's just confirming, uh, praise God. Thank you, thank you, God. Someone told me this. <laughs> thank you, you opened my eyes to this. Because, because uh, if I hadn't known this, I'd be lost. It, it, it's, it's a, if nothing else, it's a great encouragement for you. Um, but if you're not a Christian, if you haven't been a believer, you haven't understood this before, and, and it's, maybe this is a new to, to you, because and and, there's a whole generation out there that's never even heard. I mean, we, we just, the stuff I've grown up with, you never even heard before. This could be like radically different, something you haven't heard before. Then let me invite you into the kingdom of God. Let me invite you into salvation. Uh, th th there's, there's more to it, but it starts with, with the simple prayer of saying, God, I want you in my life. I accept that gift of salvation. I need your forgiveness because I'm a sinner. And we go from there. 
I want you to pray with me. Um, if you've never done this prayer, uh, please come and talk to me. Uh, your next step is baptism. In every every word through the New Testament, that's, that's the next step in this. Uh, but it starts with this confession. Let's pray together. Father. <laughs>